Hey guys, welcome back to Office Hours. Today we're at Rain Agency, which is a digital consultancy that works with emerging technology as like voice tech and Alexa. Today we're going to learn about how to manage your side hustles, how to effectively manage professional relationships that turn into personal relationships, and very interestingly, how to manage remote teams with different cultures. I'm B. Arthur. No, not that one. I'm an entrepreneur, licensed therapist, and women's advocate. And I'm stepping out to help women with their work issues, one office at a time. Because we're such a small team, um, I have a lot of trouble like maintaining creative energy outside of the office. Um, I get a lot of opportunities to help friends with different things and like develop my own different projects, but I kind of have a hard time getting myself motivated to do that once I get home. Mm. So just so we're clear, when you talk about opportunities for your friends, are these friendly opportunities or are these paid opportunities? Uh, they've, I've learned my lesson and they've <laughs> become paid opportunities, Good. but I've definitely had instances where they weren't, and I was like, yeah, it's for my portfolio. Mm. Oh and, my God. You know, and so I learned that lesson pretty quick. Yeah, that's great. So I just want to do a very quick public service announcement to all of our watchers. Um, if you have a friend who is uniquely talented, like <laughs> Chloe here is, and they do something that is very useful, in fact, it's so useful, it's valuable, and somebody pays them to do it, if you want a favor from them, pay her what you owe her. Okay, don't make her turn into Rihanna on you. So <laughs> I'm really glad that you have formalized and taken your side hustle seriously. So it's kind of a side business. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like when you get home from having to create for clients all day, it's really hard to kind of sustain that creativity for little projects. Definitely, yeah. And I have a hard time just like getting my laptop open. I'm just like, oh, I don't want to look at a screen anymore. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, one thing I see is that a lot of creatives either have ADD or OCD. And if you do, if you are kind of an OCD creative, it can be really difficult to have that many projects at the same time. I think it's really important to edit and really understand and respect your bandwidth so that others will too. Mm -hmm. As much as you want to help everybody, as much as you want everybody to make sure their visuals are popping, your creative juices won't be flowing if you're just operating out of obligation. I think as much as you can, just to make sure everybody feels respected and taken seriously, really treat it like a formal relationship and that means send them a scope of work from the outset. Do you do that now? No. <laughs> okay, so just for our audience, an SOW is a scope of work that really outlines exactly what's going to be done, really itemizes each of the tasks that's going to get done, and has a deadline and has all the communication check-in points. So that way it's on paper and it's a contract. Otherwise, you they'll definitely people will always, when you give them an inch, they'll ask for a mile. Also, people don't understand, people who aren't creatives don't understand all everything that goes into what right. you do, particularly when you're talking about creative energy. So they're just like, oh, just change it, and it's not just anything. Yeah. Things. So I think it's okay without you saying, I have to do all this and I have to do all that. <laughs> if it's up front and you say, these are all of the things I'm doing for you. And also when they see it spelled out, they'll take you more seriously. Right. They'll see the value of it and they'll respect your time accordingly. So you just have to teach people how to treat you. So I've been here for about three and a half years and most of the people that work at Rain have actually been here for quite some time. We've definitely fostered a lot of friendships as well as kind of professional relationships. So how do you kind of balance the two, that kind of professional relationship with that personal friendship outside of work? It's a little tricky, isn't it? Yeah, you it know? is. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are saying, oh, you know, make sure you keep those relationships separate. But in my experience, in companies where people work with people that they like and respect, they always go the extra mile. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's always like Randy or somebody who you're just like, oh, forget it, it's just for Randy. <laughs> you know, yeah. but if it's for Lisa, you're gonna work a little bit harder and make sure it makes her job easier because mm -hmm. you care about her. So that's the pros. The cons is that good old Lisa, it's so fun to go to happy hour with her, but you know that she's supposed to be doing work. So mm -hmm. I think it's really a matter of just like making sure that you're holding yourself to a high standard when it comes to your own professionalism and holding your friend to the same standards. That way it just like makes it so that both of you are on your A game. And I think it's okay, you know, if you're coming from a place of love and good intentions. I think it's okay to tell people, oh yeah, girl, you know, I noticed you were slipping in this meeting. Is something going on? Mm -hmm. You know, or yeah. is if there's something that's interrupting your workflow in that way? But do you think it's more of you feel uncomfortable sometimes in the situations or more? Um, I think, I think it's more so it would be helpful to understand how to approach situations. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, um, you notice someone is, you know, kind of fooling around in the office for, for a little bit and you're like, oh, we have this, this deadline tonight. Like mm -hmm. how do you go up to them and say, 
hey, you know, can you maybe sit down for a second and like do the work because I really need you to get it done. You know, how do you kind of approach that but also know like, oh, we're probably going to go get drinks later. So right. how do you kind of balance Interesting. Yeah. I like this question because when it's your friend, you're tempted to just laugh it off and go, oh, right. you know, whenever you get a chance, you know, so it still feels casual. But it's okay to kind of take it to 11 and make sure that you put, you're putting on your work hat, mm -hmm. you know. There's friend hat and then there's work hat. And I really think that it's okay to just really acknowledge like, girl, get it together. Because again, if you care about the person, they know, you, they know that you care about them. It's not like you're attacking them, but yeah. no one likes to feel criticized, especially by someone you care about. That's when feelings get hurt. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you really can't worry about hurt feelings at work. And so I think when you do have those conversations, because these kind of instances are inevitable, make sure it's after work, off company time, and just in friend time. Rain's really unique in that we have three offices and they're in three very different locations with very different cultures and work approaches. Cultures in general can be a little tough. Where exactly are the other offices again? Uh, Nicaragua and Salt Lake City, Utah. Wow, those couldn't be more different. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the cultural influences really can't be underestimated. I imagine that with Utah, you have people who are more family oriented and really believe in this idea of a nine to five. <laughs> right, <laughs> Where which New doesn't York, exist in New York. In New York, it's like, <laughs> 8 a.m. to 12 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> so is it more a time things or, or urgency? I think it's a time thing. I think it's a priority thing as well. Like mm. you said, they're you know very family based in Utah um, and understandably need to get home to get dinner on the table, whereas we have a really young office here in New York. Um, there's also just a completely different approach to work in Nicaragua than in the States. Mm. And so it kind of holds things up when it comes to... It doesn't to hold things up. Our Nicaragua team is amazing and they definitely put in the extra hours when they need to. Um, but I think that, for example, in Nicaragua legally you have to take a lunch. Um, and wow. in New York, we don't know what lunch is. <laughs> so um, sometimes when you're on a deadline and your developer goes away for an hour, rightly so, because mm. he's getting his lunch that he is legally told he has to go do, and wow. you still need to get on, you know, to your deadline at the end of the day, that can be a little tough, Got but it. also we're human and people need to eat, so. Wow. But we also are in New York, so we're not that human and people don't really <laughs> We're not eat, that so. human. I mean, I really love this concept because I used to have a few offshore teams in Berlin and Pakistan. And yeah. so the hour difference was one thing, but really culturally, yeah, sometimes yeah. you wonder if like the urgency is there. And, you, and it's a mistake to assume that people think the way you do. Right. One. And it's another mistake to assume that even if they do, that they're going to do what you want them to do. Yeah. So that's why it's really important to lead with transparency. If this is the main office here and you're really directing the flow of everything, I think it's more than okay to set the standard for one what the relationship is going to look like. And the best way to do that and get people on your team is really understand their values and really understand what's important to them. Because if they're doing things their way, it's because like it's coming from a certain internal motivation um, that really influences the way that they work. And so you don't want to talk about work ethic versus work approaches. Right. Because they're obviously hard workers, but exactly. in their own way. So how can yeah. you make it work for you? You know, If you know that they have this lunch, do you get your best work out of them in the mornings? Or is it better when they've like come back from work and they're, you know, and yeah. they're safe and they're more mindful mm -hmm. of that kind of thing. I just really think really understanding what their day-to-day -day looks like so you know how to optimize yeah. your time so you can get the best out of them in that way. So what did we learn? When it comes to working with friends, make sure to treat them like clients. Get a formal agreement that outlines everything and always get paid. Now when it comes to your work wives and your work husbands, it doesn't have to be dramatic or lead to a work divorce. Just make sure that you're treating each other professionally and with the respect that they deserve, which sometimes mean holding them accountable and making sure they're staying on their A-game. Finally, we learned that when it comes to working with remote teams with different cultures, you can't get on the same page if you don't have the same goals. So don't be afraid to be clear, polite, and firm when it comes to setting your expectations but also give them the freedom to lead the most effectively for their teams. Make sure that you have the right point person. Obviously you have your other people who are at the same level, but you need a you who speaks like they do. Yeah. You know, that way, because people are just more likely to listen to someone who speaks like them and who understands them.